Do you guys want me to give you another proof that the angel of the Lord is God? I have a lot of proof. I have tons of it. I have too much of it, but let me give you two examples. Exodus 23, 20 to 23. Guys, catch this. God is speaking to Moses. He goes, I'm going to send an angel ahead of you. An angel ahead of you to guard you, guard you along the way and to bring you to the place I prepared. Now, I want you to pay attention to verse 21. God says to Moses to tell the people the following. Watch here. Do not rebel against him. Why? He will not forgive your rebellion since my name is in him. Okay, did you guys catch it? God says to Moses to tell the people, don't rebel against the angel. Why? Let's do it again. Because if you do, he will not forgive your rebellion. Why? Since my name is in him. Did you catch it? This angel sent by God has God's name in him and he can forgive sins. Let me ask you a question. What does it mean for someone to have the name of God? My name is in him. This angel is distinct from me. When you speak of God's name, you're speaking of what? In the Bible, we speak of God's name. Aren't you not talking about his characteristics, his nature, his attributes, his authority? So, if the angel has God's name in him, then what does he have? The angel must have what? The nature of God, the characteristics of God, right? That explains why he can forgive sins. That explains why he can forgive sins. Because he has the nature of God, he has the power to forgive sins like God. Do you see it? Now, what did God just tell them? What did he just say? He warned them, right? He said, don't rebel against them because he may not forgive your rebellion. If you mess with this angel, you may get him angry enough where he won't forgive you, right? And so he won't bring you into the land, correct? Is that what God just said? I want to make sure you're reading it. Okay. Now, sadly and unfortunately for the Israelites... They didn't listen. They didn't listen to the angel. They rebelled against them. And guess what happened? Uh, Judges 2, 1 to 5. They didn't listen. They rebelled against the angel. Note what the angel says. Judges 2, 1 to 5. Read this. The angel of the Lord went up from Gilgal to Bochim and said, Note who's speaking. The angel of the Lord speaking and he says, I brought you up out of Egypt. The angel says, I brought you up out of Egypt. And led you into the land that I swore to give to your forefathers. So the angel swore to the patriarchs to give them this land. I said, I will never break my covenant with you. The angel says it's his covenant. And you shall not make a covenant with the people of this land, but you shall break down the altars. Yet you have disobeyed me. Why have you done this? Now therefore, I tell you that I will not drive them out before you. They will be thorns in your sides and their gods will be a snare to you. Do you see the audacity of this angel? He says it's his covenant. He brought them into the land of Egypt. He made a promise to the patriarch, swearing to them that he'd give them this land. And now because they disobeyed him, he won't deliver them and allow their enemies to be a thorn. No, not at all. Uh, don't fall for that, just man. No, it won't work. Do you know why? It won't work? Because an agent cannot claim to be the person he represents. Weren't the disciples of Christ Jesus' agent? So, do you find Paul ever going around saying, I am the Lord Jesus Christ who was crucified for your sins and died on the cross, speaking as if he's Jesus? Why not? He's his agent. So why can't he speak as if he's Jesus? And do you find Jesus ever saying that my name is in Paul and he has the power to forgive sins like I do? I know John 20, 23 is a different context. John 20, 23, they can proclaim forgiveness of sins by accepting the gospel. Believe in Christ and be forgiven. Reject him and you won't. But could Paul and Peter ever go on saying, I am Jesus Christ, the Lord who died for your sins, like the angel does in the Old Testament? Why not? Just me. They're agents, aren't they? Aren't they the agents? And if they're the agents, can't they speak as if they're the person they represent? No. Therefore, the angel of God cannot, cannot be worshipped as God and cannot be called God. The only thing that agency accounts for is this. If the, angel, if the agent speaks to you, let's say, for example, you're my agent, just me, Andrew. 
You're my agent. I send you to speak to Sahi Christian. And I say, just me, tell Sahi Christian the following. And then Sahi Christian says, man, did you hear what Sam said to me? See, now he can say, Sam said it. Because you're speaking on my behalf. But you can't go up to Sai Christian and say, I'm Sam Shamoon. And Sai Christian cannot call you Sam Shamoon. But he can attribute your words to me because you're speaking on my behalf. So then, how is it the angel is called God, calls himself God, claims to do the things that God does, and is worshipped as God? That won't work. So don't let anyone use the concept of agency to try to sway you or deceive you, brother. That won't work. Because if agency could account for that, then why didn't Paul and Peter and John go around saying, I am Jesus Christ, the Son of God who died for you? After all, they're Christ's agents, so they can speak as if they were Him. Why didn't they do that? Because agency will not account for speaking that way. Besides, let's take it a step further. In, the, in, in Revelation, the angel that was sent to John, wasn't he the agent of the Father and the Son? Post Revelation 22, verse 6 and 7. 6 is the key. The angel said to me, These words are trustworthy and true. The Lord, the God of the spirits of the prophets, sent his angel, his angel, to show his servants things that must soon take place. So the angel speaking to John is God's angel, angel, right? He's God's agent, correct? Behold, I'm coming soon. Blessed is he who keeps the words of the prophecy of the book. Now, just me. In Revelation 22, 6, who sent the angel? Who sent his angel? No, not there in 22.6. It doesn't say Jesus. Who does it say? Read it in 22.6. The Lord, the God of the spirits of the prophets. Right? Okay, good. The Lord, the God of the spirits of the prophets. Now let's read verses 8 to 9. Remember, this angel is God's agent. I, John, am the one who heard and saw these things. And when I heard and seen them, I fell down to worship at the feet of the angel who had been showing them to me. What does the angel say? But he said to me, do not do it. I am a fellow servant with you and with your brothers the prophets and of all who keep the words of this book worship God. Note that although the angel is an agent of God, he doesn't say he's God, doesn't speak as if he's God. He says he's simply a servant like the other prophets and he tells John to worship God. Well, why didn't he receive worship seeing that he's God's angel, agent? Why didn't he just say, okay, well, I'm God's agent. When you're worshiping me, you're, you're worshiping God. Why did he refuse it? Then why does the angel of God in the Old Testament accept worship? Numbers 22, 31. Then the Lord opened Balaam's, or Balaam's eyes, and he saw the angel of the Lord standing in the road with a sword drawn, so he bowed low and fell face down. So Balaam bowed down before the angel of the Lord, and the angel of the Lord didn't rebuke him. But God's angel revelation rebuked John for bowing down and worshiping him. How do we account for that, guys? This angel in the Old Testament, you got it, my brother. Praise Jesus Christ. That's how we account for it, Sahih. Because this angel in the Old Testament is not a creature. He's God. Whereas that other angel in Revelation is a creature, so he can't accept the worship given to God. That's why. This angel is not a creature in the Old Testament. This angel is God. And the New Testament says he became the man, Jesus Christ. So that tells you, as far as the New Testament is concerned, Jesus was there in the Old Testament, appearing as God's messenger, calling himself God, being worshipped as God, and being honored by God himself as God. Praise Jesus' name. Post Revelation 22, 6 to 7 again. The angel in Revelation, although God's agent, refuses to be worshipped, doesn't call himself God, says he's a servant. The angel in the Old Testament accepts worship and calls himself God, and is called God by God himself and the people. Now read Revelation 22, 6 to 7. The angel said to me, these are the wor words are trustworthy and true. The Lord, the God of the spirits of the prophets, sent his angel to show his servants the things that must soon take place. Behold, I am coming soon. Blessed is he who keeps the words of the prophecy in this book. Don't forget what 6 and 7 says. The Lord, the God of the spirits of the prophets, meaning the God who is in control of the prophets and their words. He controls what they say. 